live in a twilight world and there are no friends at dusk. So today I'm going to be talking about this character here, Raz al Ghul, which is Arabic for Head of the Demon. Now I know this character from the Batman films, mainly the Christopher Nolan Batman films, and he's portrayed by Liam Nilsson. And he's the head of an organization called the League of Shadows, which is obviously an underground organization. Now, he's been on my mind ever since uh, London has been on fire, which is what, a week ago? And, you know, it's pretty obvious to anyone that's uh, looking into it that basically a load of arson was done around London and they tried to, you know, claim it was a climate change thing. So, um,. Have a look at this clip here. A cynical man would call what these people have lives, Wayne. Crime, despair. This is not how man was supposed to live. The League of Shadows has been a check against human corruption for thousands of years. We sacked Rome, loaded trade ships with plague rats, burned London to the ground. Every time a civilization reaches the pinnacle of its decadence, we return to restore the balance. London's burning, London's burning, fetch the engine. When forest grows too wild, a purging fire is inevitable and natural. Tomorrow the world will watch in horror as its greatest city destroys itself. The movement back to harmony will be unstoppable this time. So there you have it, Ra's al Ghul, the head of the demon, explaining to Bruce Wayne that him and his organization have been for centuries destroying civilizations once they reach the peak of their decadence. Now, I'm asking myself the question, is there a real Ra's al Ghul out there? Because, I mean, by, by the way, I'm not a um, comic book expert and I've never really read a, a comic book in my life, but I have been watching a few, like, YouTube videos on the origins of Ra's al Ghul. And, you know, it's quite an impressive backstory. And I, f I feel it's kind of relevant to what's going on right now. So he this character here was invented in a Batman comic back in 1971, okay? And, you know, he's supposedly 700 years old. And when he was a young man, he studied uh, science and alchemy. And I believe he tried to save a prince. I, I could be getting this wrong, but he tried to save a prince using his, um, you know, his expertise in, in the scientific method and chemistry. And it didn't work. And I think the king chased him out of the um, whatever town he was living in. So he went into exile and a nomadic tribe picked him up taught him some serious, serious combat skills, but he also got to continue studying his, uh, you know, chemistry and what some might call alchemy. Now, he came across something called the Lazarus Pit, which is essentially a pit of chemicals that you can put someone in and bring them back to life. Now, the first person he put in there, yes, it brought them back to life, but it made them go crazy. This is the catch with the Lazarus Pit. It can bring you back to life. Once you come back out, you go in crazy. You go crazy and insane. So there's a catch, okay? It's what happens when you try and go against nature. Now, according to the mythology of Ra's al Ghul, he dipped himself in the Lazarus pit. Not too much. But yes, it made him go temporarily crazy, but he became an immortal being. And from then on, he basically fought in every war going. He became a very, very rich man. And he set up the League of Shadows. I think in the comic books it's called the League of Assassins. But yeah, the League of Shadows who are, you know, like the um, Liam Neeson character just said there, they're going around working in the shadows to destroy civilizations. Now, he also set up an eco you know, an eco-organization called the Demon. So he was actually out on the surface in public uh, trying to, you know, rally politicians and the public into saving the planet. But he is, you know, he's very much an eco-terrorist because he 
he strongly believes that all humans need to be killed in order for the planet to restart again. Now, how freaking similar does that sound right now to the likes of Klaus Schwab and your Bill Gateses and all these other fictional characters that are, you know, basically trying to shut the planet down under the guise of climate change, right? Another interesting thing about Ra's al Ghul, he is an expert in viruses and germs. Ding, ding, ding. I mean, come on now. What have we been dealing with the last three years? The scandemic. This idea that a virus is coming to kill us all. Now, regardless of whether we believe in the virus or not, how weird is it it relates to this character, Ra's al Ghul? You know? So yeah, I really am asking myself the question, somewhere is there a real Ra's al Ghul pulling the strings and trying to shut down the world because he believes in the, you know, the deadliest words out there for the greater good and looks at the human race as a, as a problem that needs to be removed. Another thing he's quite well known for doing is kind of like holding politicians ransom or injecting them with viruses and germs and then basically saying, look, do what I say or else I'm not going to cure you. And yet again, if we reference that to our real life situation right now, all of these politicians seem to be compromised and they're just going along with the scandemic no matter what. Interesting stuff, man. But what I also find interesting about Ra's al Ghul is he's very much like a vampire or an immortal being, which in my mind are one of the same things, okay? It's only Hollywood that's put this idea of a vampire being some kind of a blood-sucking... You know, you know, the classic cliche of a vampire, some teenage love affair, blood-sucking, blah, blah, blah. But... I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the, um, you know, an actual vampire who's potentially exists out there called the Count of St. Germain. Some people call him the Count of St. Germain. And that's an interesting rabbit hole. If anyone's got like spare time on their hands, definitely try and um, find yourself a good YouTube video or a good rabbit hole on the Count of St. Germain. Because this weird character has been walking around planet Earth for a long, long time. Apparently since the Crusades, or the Third Crusades. A lot of the English soldiers returning from Jerusalem the Holy Land would tell tales of what they called the Wandering Jew. And leg legend has it, he's a guy called... What was his name? Cartiphilus, I believe? And apparently the story goes, you know, he was around in the same time of Jesus. Now, as Jesus was getting walked through the streets with a cross on his back, on his way to Calvary, Cartaphilus went over to him and said, come on now, Jesus, hurry up. As Jesus was on his knees taking a rest after carrying around a huge crucifix, Jesus then looked at Cartaphilus and said, I'm going now, but you will be here until my return. And Cartaphilus was moved away by the Roman soldiers back into the crowd and thought nothing of it. Now, as the years went on, of course, all of his friends around him were getting older and dying. Yet Cartaphilus was stuck looking exactly the same age as he was the night he met Jesus Christ. Of course, this leads us to believe that a curse was put on him. That he was just going to walk this earth until the second coming of Christ. Now this character, the Wandering Jew, he was called by some. Some called him the Undying Count. Some called him the man that does not die and knows everything. He has appeared pretty much in every historical event going. He was at the French Revolution, the English Civil War. Apparently, a guy of his description 
was captured by German soldiers in World War II. And he has such a great presence, you know, he knows every language. He's just full of knowledge that the German soldiers just didn't want to kill him and they just let him go, you know. There's even talk of a shadowy figure being present at the signing of American independence. A lot of people think it's the Count of St. Germain. That's what we're dealing with here, an immortal being, what some would call a vampire, okay? There's also talk that he doesn't eat anything. He just drinks a red liquid. And apparently, if I remember correctly, he was arrested somewhere in the United States later on in life. And the police, um, you know, checked out some of this liquid and it had traces of blood in it. And apparently, the um, sheriff of that town said to the Count of St. Germain, look, we'll give you 24 hours, but after that, we're going to have to arrest you. And of course, he just vanished. This is what this guy's known for, just vanishing. Now, he's meant to be a master of alchemy. Apparently, he can, he can, you know, he can actually do it. He can turn lead into gold, and he knows how to make diamonds very quickly, all through alchemy, and that's how he's become so rich. And that's how he gets to hang out with all of the, you know, upper classes around the world, and that's how he has so much influence in politics and, you know, with royal families and whatnot. Celebrities, musicians, filmmakers. He's rubbing elbows with people that have great social engineering and cultural influences on the world, okay? And, you know, it's just... It's just an incredible character, okay? Now, according to written historical records, there has been a count of St. Germain from 1651 up until 1856. So that's over 200 years, okay? Now, of course, many of the naysayers have claimed that it's just been imposters, okay? Many people just taking on the character of Count St. Germain. Now, you know, that kind of fit, fits in with a lot of stuff I'm saying about the faceless men being a cult and very well-trained people that are similar to a Count St. Germain that can change their appearance and just keep wearing masks and can talk any language. They can just, they can just, yeah, they can just transform their appearance, okay? We all know, you know, Joe Biden is a man in a mask. We all know that by now. But it's possible that Count St. Germain is behind the mask or other people like him, what I call faceless men, are there masters of wearing the mask because we're living in the age of masks you know everything being presented to us right now is a mask for something else even me you we all wear a mask in you know metaphorically speaking in one way or another for example when you go to work you'll put on your work mask and that's the mask you wear to present yourself to your work colleagues then you might go down to the gym and you might put on a different mask you might go down to a pub and put on another mask, okay? We are living in the age of masks. The scandemic was a mask for something else. The Ukraine is a mask for something else. Masks everywhere, everywhere you go. So there we have it. Ra's al Ghul, head of the demon. The Count of St. Germain, an immortal being that's possibly in league with the devil. We live in a twilight world and are no friends at dusk.